Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of I and Hako. My name is Kenta, and for today's episode, we'll be going over the Hako FM203 dual port soldering station. Um, but before we get started on, on today's episode, I just want to mention to everyone uh, th with the coronavirus uh, that business is are starting to reopen. Um, but uh, for everyone to be, please be careful, stay safe. Uh, here at American Hako, we're still having our uh, staff wear masks practice social distancing and uh, frequently wash your hands. We're trying to stay as safe and healthy as possible uh, to protect our staff and our customers. So I hope everyone out there is doing the same, uh, staying healthy and uh, staying safe. Now, um, on with uh, today's episode, like I said, uh, it's going to be on the FM203, but on the last episode, I covered the uh, FX951. And on that episode, I went over the basic operation and went into the system parameters of the FX951. So for today's episode, I'm going to be uh, doing something similar uh, with FM203, going over the basic operation and the system parameters for the uh, FM203. But before we get into the system parameters, uh, let's just review what the FM203 is and what kind of hand pieces that you can operate on the 203. So the FM203 is a 140 watt dual port soldering station. It can take uh, many different types of hand pieces or accessories. Uh, besides the standard FM2027, that's the standard, uh, standard iron, which take the T15 tips. It can take the uh, micro iron, which is the FM2030, which take the uh, T30 tips. T30, uh, sorry, FM2032 taking the T30 tips. Hot tweezers, which is the FM2022, can take the T16 tips. and can take the FM2023 mini parallel removers. Those are great for doing, uh, working on uh, uh, capacitors reworking capacitors, they take the T9 tips. Uh, the 203 can also take a heavy duty iron, which is called the FM2030, and those use the uh, T22 tips. And apart from uh, those hand pieces that you see on the slide, um, the 203 can also work with the uh, 2024 desoldering gun. Uh, if you have the uh, uh, desoldering module available, they can also take the nitrogen heavy duty hand piece, which is called the FM2031 and the nitrogen uh, standard handpiece, which is called the FM2026. So all in all, eight different types of hand pieces that you could, you'll be able to use on the FM203. It's a very versatile uh, soldering slash uh, rework station, uh, the FM203. Now, uh, oh, sorry, about the temperature range. Temperature range on the 203, it varies a little bit uh, between the hand pieces that you choose to operate on. But for the micro and the standard, temperature range is from 200 to 400 C. For the tweezers, it's 200 to 400 C, and for the heavy duty, it's 200 to 500 C. So again, depending on the which hand pieces you are operating on the 203, uh, the set uh, the temperature range does differ a little bit. So please keep that in mind. Now let's uh, get on with the uh, actual operation and uh, get into the system parameters of the 203. So here in front of, in front of me, I have the uh, FM203. This is what the face looks like. You have the display. This is the uh, key card which you always need. And you'll have four buttons, the star button, the pound button, and the up and down buttons, also the D and S buttons. And you have your two channels, channel D and channel S, okay? And the power switch is in the back of the station. As soon as the power of the station on, you'll see that both lights glow red, but the S is flashing. That means display is showing what the status of channel S, okay? And if I want a quickly, quick glance of the set temperature, again, press the star button for a quick glance of the set temperature. If I want to change the set temperature, press and hold the star button. Use the up and down buttons to toggle through the values. Press the star to confirm, move over, confirm, and confirm. Again, that's the change of set temperature. Now the offset is the pound button, so press the pound button to see what your offset value is. For channel S, I have an offset value of minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. If I wanted to change that value, press and hold the pound button, and again, use the up and down uh, buttons to, and the star key to confirm and make your desired selection. Okay. Now, channel S right now is powered on. The display is showing channel S because the light on S is flashing. If I wanted to turn off channel S, I just simply press and hold down the S button and it'll turn itself off. Now, if I wanted to turn that back on, same procedure, press, press and hold the S button 
and it'll turn back on. Okay, if I so since there's two channels, channel D, channel S, if I wanted to go back and forth between uh, either channels, there's a couple different ways you can do this. So if I wanted to go over to channel D, one way to do it is I could press the D button and you see that the flash went over to the D. That means that the display is now showing the status of channel D set at 660F. Okay, or so the other way you can do this is to simply just pick up the iron on channel D and then it'll automatically switch over to that, uh, to that side of the channel. Now all this can be configured uh, within the system parameters, which I'll be getting into in a short while, but I wanted to just uh, go over and review uh, the basic operation. Uh, again, how to change your set temperature, uh, press down the start button, how to change your offset uh, values with the, with the pound button, how to turn each uh, channel on or off by pressing and holding the button turns it off, pressing and holding it again, turn brings it back on, okay? And that beep was just allowing me to know that your set temperature has reached on channel D. Okay, again, basic operation, nothing too uh, special here. Now let's get into the system parameters. Uh, so first thing you do is uh, obviously turn the station off. And again, you'll need the key card, insert the key card in there. And to get into the system parameters, you turn, you turn the power station on uh, by pressing down the up button and turning the power on. And that gets you into the system parameters. Now for the FM203, there's 10 uh, system parameters that you have control over. Um, the 951 has six system parameters. Um, so I'm not gonna get into, so the first, so, so those same six uh, parameters are the same six parameters on the FM203, just the 203 has additional, uh, four additional parameters, seven through 10, that you have additional controls over. Now, I'm not gonna get into much detail on the first six, um, so if you guys need a review, or if you missed the last episode, make sure you go onto our website, or you can go to the YouTube website and type in HACO FX951 uh, to get a recap on the FX951 and those uh, system parameters one through six. Okay, so let's go back to the 203 system parameters. Right now, this is parameter number one. So again, quick uh, review. It's the display between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Keep it on Fahrenheit, that's what I'm working with right now. Uh, this is your parameter two, auto sleep time. I get into that. You'll see that the channel D is lit up and you see three, that means uh, three minutes is your auto sleep time for channel D. I go ahead and confirm, and then now the light moves over to channel S. Now you have, you can control your uh, sleep time for channel S. If I wanted to change that, I can go ahead and change that to say five minutes. Okay, so you have control over each channel regarding your sleep times. Okay, uh, parameter three is your uh, low temperature alarm threshold. Parameter four is your operator control over your uh, offset inputs. Parameter five is turning on or off your buzzer for your SE and uh, CE error alerts. Parameter six is turning your buzzer on or off for when your tips have reached its set temperature. And here we go. The additional parameters on 203, starting with parameter seven. Parameter seven is turning on or off your auto uh, sleep function. So um, in parameter two, you were able to set the time of your auto sleep setting. Uh, in parameter seven, you can either turn off your auto sleep feature, turning off is zero, or turn on. One is on, zero is off. Turn on your auto sleep feature. Um, I like the auto sleep feature, I always keep it on. So I select one, hit the star key to confirm, and let's go to parameter eight. Parameter eight is an additional feature. It's an auto shutoff feature that is on the FM203. I go into that. Again, one is on, zero is off. Uh, when you have the auto shutoff feature turned on, that just means that after 30 minutes of uh, inactivity um, on the station, then the station will kill the power to the, to the heaters of the soldering irons. Um, so it's a very nice uh, safety feature to make use of. I always like to leave that on because it's a nice safety feature, so I keep it on one uh, and confirm. Uh, parameter number nine is the auto switching uh, setting feature. 
So when I go into parameter nine, again, I can either turn it off, zero, or turn it on, number one. When I have it on, that means every time I pick up the iron, it will automatically switch uh, channels. I don't have to go uh, and press uh, D or press S to use that uh, particular um, side of the, of the uh, station. I think it's a very useful feature, so I always keep that on. One to confirm. And the last parameter is parameter 10. And that parameter is dual channel setting control. You can either, again, turn it off for zero or turn it on for one. When you have this parameter 10 dual channel setting feature turned on, that means you're allowed to power, you can power both channels at the same time simultaneously when you're using the micro iron or when you're using the uh, standard soldering iron. If you're using the heavy duty or one of the tweezers, um, you can only use those irons on channel D. And when you're using the heavy duty or any one of the tweezers, um, you can only use one channel at a time. So even though you have it dual channel setting turned on, if you have uh, say heavy duty and a micro plugged in here, then it's gonna be one at a time heavy duty and micro, one at a time. You can still use that auto switching mechanism, but not simultaneously when you have, again, the heavy duty or either one of the tweezers plugged into channel D. So uh, confirm here again. And then the last thing you need to do is just press down the start button to confirm. Yes, to confirm your changes or no, you wanna make some additional changes. I'm done here, so I'm gonna confirm my changes. And here we go. Both channels are lit up. That means I have power and heat to both of my irons because right now I have a standard iron on channel D, a standard iron on channel S, okay? Channel D is flashing, telling me that the display is showing me my temperature setting for channel D. I pick up the iron on channel S, the display is now showing me what my temperature setting is on channel S. Okay, so that's how you make use of the system parameters. It gives you uh, more additional controls. Now let me turn off my station. And sh since I had um, regular soldering irons plugged into both channels, uh, let me just show you what will happen if I have, uh, like I said, a heavy duty or a tweezer plugged into channel D. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that away. And I will go ahead and grab my tweezer iron. Make sure I have the receptacle plugged in all the way and make sure I have the sleep cord plugged into the back and turn the station back on. Okay, so before both D and S lights were uh, red. That means power to both sides. But now because I have the tweezer iron plugged into channel D, only one of the sides is lit up, channel S. Okay, as soon as I pick up the D, the tweezer iron, then channel D lights up. Okay, well, only one at a time. Like I said, if you have the heavy duty or the tweezers, only one channel at a time. And if I go ahead and pick up channel S, S will go up. And now channel D, the tweezer iron, is now in uh, sleep mode. Okay. So there you have it. Um, went over the basic parameter, uh, not basic parameter, basic operation. Um, how to change your set temperatures, how to change your offset value, how to change uh, each channel on and off, and uh, some of the important uh, system parameters that you have additional controls over. Um, I hope I was able to clear some of that up with everyone watching today. Um, and if there's any questions, uh, we'll take some questions at this point. So the question was, um, how do they know, how does a person know if they're buying authentic uh, uh, T15 tips for their FM203? Um, that's a good question because uh, over the years we have been seeing a lot of uh, counterfeit T15 tips um, pop up. Um, but if you're ever doubtful or if you don't know where to buy um, authentic uh, Hako soldering iron tips, please uh, just buy from one of our authorized distributors or distributor partners. 
Um, and if you don't know uh, who they are, you can go on to our website, www.hakousa.com, go to the uh, Where to Buy, click on Where to Buy, and uh, on that page, you'll be able to find a whole list of our authorized distributors and our distributor partners. Um, so if you're wondering where you, can you buy authentic tips, uh, that's where you can find them. Um, but uh, in cases where you knowingly, uh, there's a lot of knockoff tips and some people just knowingly uh, purchase knockoff tips uh, because of the price most likely. Um, but in that case, we highly advise you not to use uh, knockoff tips or counterfeit tips because of uh, two, uh, two reasons, because of the performance uh, and uh, safety reasons. Um, knockoff tips, they're just not made with the same quality that Hako makes them with. So uh, uh, we cannot guarantee the performance, that's number one. And uh, safety, safety issue. I have personally seen a uh, counterfeit uh, T15 tip where as soon as I plug them into the 2027 handpiece, the tips start to glow really red and hot. And that's just showing me that they have no temperature control inside of them. There's no sensor inside of them. Uh, and at that point, it becomes a really uh, dangerous situation. So I uh, really advise you not to buy counterfeit tips. Uh, and again, if you're wondering where can you buy authentic Hako tips, just uh, buy from your, one of our authorized distributors. If you, can't, if you don't know where, who our authorized distributors are, just go to uh, our webpage, uh, click on the where to www.hakousa.com, go to where to buy, and it will show you a whole list of our authorized distributors and uh, distributor partners. Uh, next question. What happens when you plug in a heavy duty iron into uh, channel S? Uh, the quick answer is it will not work and you will get a uh, error display on the dis error message on the display that says uh, CE because it's, it, it, it only works on channel D. Same thing with the tweezers. Uh, you, you, you could obviously plug them in mechanically, but it's not going to work. So I uh, have time for one more question. One more question. Um, so the question is, uh, with so many different um, hand pieces or accessories, uh, I think it was, uh, what, so what comes with the FM203? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, we have here at American Hako different uh, options available. Uh, what am I talking about here? So uh, we have one option where it's, that's, where it's just the FM203 station by itself. Um, and we have another option where it's the FM203 with, a, with one standard FM2027 uh, iron and iron holder. Uh, that's called the FM203-01. There is another option called the FM203-DP where you get two regular standard irons with the FM203 station. Uh, there's also another option called the FM203-HD where you get the FM203 and the heavy duty iron along with the uh, iron holder, uh, the heat pad. Um, but just remember with all of our, those different combinations, the tips are sold separately. So just uh, remember to keep that in mind. If you're looking to say a combination of tweezers and micro, what you can do is just buy the FM203 by itself and get the, uh, get the separate uh, tweezer kit and the micro kit uh, individually. That's all the time I have for uh, today's episode. And thanks for watching and remember, Keep your eye on Hako. Thank you.